What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest build of Superior OS based on Android 13 and this is an unofficial build but still I thought why not try it because some of you guys were asking me to actually make a video about this ROM. This is the 17th November 2022 build. I have found some issues in this ROM but I'll talk about that later. I have to say that some of you guys are really pissed that I make Redmi K20 Pro's Evolution X ROM videos always. That's because I find the Evolution X ROM to be one of the most stable experience overall. I'll talk about why in this particular video. I'll explain what's the problems with the other ROMs that I face. So here, this comes with both GApps and Vanilla variant, but I have of course flashed the GApps variant as usual. And yes, the flashing guide will be present in the description, you should not worry about it. But let me show you the home screen. This is how it looks, all the animations and stuff everywhere is just buttery smooth. This launcher, if you are wondering what launcher is this, let me actually show you. The name of it is the superior launcher and in the settings of it, we have some misc settings. From here, you can disable the suggestions if you want, I guess, let me actually do that. Okay, so for some reason it shows the launcher actually force closing, I don't know why. In the recents we have some background opacity, then we have even more like the lens and stuff. I don't know what it does, but yeah, these options are there. And we have the app drawer customization, then we also have the home screen customization. Here we do have the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. And the hot seat background and stuff, you can enable it if you want. The corner radius and stuff, you can customize. This is basically a Corvus launcher kind of experience, I would say. And here. Let me actually show you double tapping anywhere in the home screen will make the phone sleep and if I just press and hold on the fingerprint scanner area it will unlock the device. So no issues whatsoever with the unlocking and stuff and the double tap to sleep is working fine. The wallpaper that I'm using is the superior OS wallpaper. I'll show you the app which is present by default. Swiping down anywhere in the home screen will get you to the quick setting panel and the light theme the quick setting panel stays white. I am liking it. I do like these particular ROMs where you get the like white quick setting panel in the light theme. But if you enable the dark theme, the quick setting panel will turn dark. You shouldn't worry about it. And to the left of the home screen, we do have the Google's Discover page. No issues with that. And of course, swiping up will get you to the app drawer. But in the background, if you're noticing, we have this bloody frosted glass kind of effect. This actually looks dope, I would say. So here in the about section, this is how it looks. We have the superior OS version as 13, and this is the community version. The Android version is you will get the Android 13's Easter egg, and you will get all these kind of random emojis if you want to see those. Let me go back, we have the November security patch right out of the box, so we are getting latest security patch, you should not worry about it. The build date is 15th November 2022 and the stock kernel here is the 4.14 bull X kernel and the SLNX rate is showing as enforcing. In the system panel, we have a system updater, from here you can actually check for updates whenever there is a newer one I guess. Let me go back, we have this pop-up camera settings and from here you can actually enable the sounds if you want to for the motorized front camera and even you can calibrate the front camera if you want. But the gesture settings are simply not here, those are there in the customization settings which are present in the superior lab. I'll show you those but first let me show you this wallpaper app, this is what I have been using and as you can see plethora of superior OS wallpapers you will get, let me actually open some of them. So you cannot really swipe over here to have to select particular wallpapers from right here as you can see but let me tell you I did not apply the wallpaper from this particular app because to enable from a different app as you can see set with from here I have set it with the gallery wallpaper app I had to do that because from this particular wallpaper if I just click on apply and then set on home screen or lock screen or set both the center icon is actually coming up to be on the right. This is one small problem that I have noticed, but otherwise it is working perfectly fine. Now talking about the quick setting panel again, this is how it looks. I have changed the brightness slider position and stuff and this is how the power menu looks. We do have the advanced reboot option in a belt. That's why you can really reboot the recovery or fast boot from right here. You should not worry about it. And we have this Wi-Fi mobile data, etc. toggle. Now one thing that I like about this Bluetooth toggle is that if you tap here, you will see the particular device that you are connected to. It looks like this and the animation is actually looking dope. And we have the dark theme, the night light, the hotspot and stuff. The screen recording is also there. You can record the device audio and microphone audio both at the same time. The battery saver is there, the Google Home controls and nearby share. Reboot toggle is also there. Then we have the airplane, the sound toggle and the receiving and high brightest mode. Now let's talk about the stock camera. Well, you are getting a lineage OS kind of stock camera. This is how it looks like. It doesn't have much customization, but it only has these grid options and stuff. And we have the torch, then the flash option, you can put it on auto or something. And the aspect ratio, you can actually change to 16 to 9 and 4 to 3 for the rear camera. You can already switch real lenses and stuff if you want to do that. But we do have the video option. There you will get the FHD, UHD, SD and the HD options. Then let me actually switch the front camera. This is how it works. 
and as you can see the front camera is working fine no issues and if you're wondering about the shutter speed and stuff as you can see i just clicked a photo this is how it looks and i would say it has good amount of details but it is definitely not close to any gcam or miui camera definitely that's why i have installed this gcam go and stuff this has been working perfectly fine no issues whatsoever with this gcam go and i have installed these separately by the way and even the lmc 8.4 i mean we have this 2x telephoto zoom and stuff and even in the video settings takes a little bit of time but we do have the 4k 60fps option you should not worry with the lmc 8.4 but the only thing that you need to worry about with the lmc 8.4's iron heart kind of config it cannot really switch the lenses if i just try to do that let me switch to the 2x one and the camera will force close right now the problem is i cannot even open the camera these are the problems that i face when i flash any other rom except for evolution x i don't know why it happens but yeah right now the lmc 8.4 is cannot really be opened let me actually show you what i have to do i have to clear the data of the app so clear storage then i try to reopen it and then so here my config has been reset that's why i need to again import the config so once i do that Yes, it will work fine on the 1x mode, but as soon as I switch to any other lens like the 0.6x, it will force close again. So these are the problems that I face, that I mentioned. Like in Evolution X, I do not simply see these kind of issues, but in some other ROMs, I do see these issues. But in no way I'm blaming the ROM or something because this is still in the like unofficial kind of state. So I guess it is supposed to happen. It is not a huge problem or something, but I'm just mentioning these things because you guys say that why I try Evolution X all the time or always. This is the reason you can clearly see. Now let me jump into the settings and here is how it looks like. We have battery settings, this is how it looks. If you scroll down more, we do not have any battery health kind of things. Those are simply missing like the charging cycle, current battery capacity, design battery capacity, both are missing. So all those things you cannot really see from here, but you do have the battery temperature seeing option. Then we have this low battery blink light option. I have tested the battery life with the Aku battery app. And with that, I have got about eight and a half or more than that amount of screen on time, eight hours and 42 minutes. So that's a really good amount of screen on time, but I have to mention that I have replaced my battery. This is an original new battery. That's why I have been getting great battery life with this and 95% battery health. That's why I have been getting really great battery life. I did not face any issues with the battery life. And if you're wondering about the standby time and stuff, the screen off shows as six days. That's a huge amount of number. Even the combined use it's showing as 53 hours. That's like battery for days, I would say. And if you're wondering about the fast charging, yes, the fast charging experience has been really good. It has been charging above 4000 MA with a 33 watt fast charger and if you are using a 18 watt fast charger it will charge about 3500 ma but yes definitely with a 33 watt fast charger it charges blazing fast but definitely it gets heated up a little bit more with the 33 watt fast charger you have to keep that in mind now inside superior lab we have the customizations in here we have the status bar settings we have the battery styles and stuff and we do get the icon circle text etc but we do not simply have any battery landscape right or left kind of those kind of icons or any bigger dotted circle and stuff. Those are simply missing. It has simple customizations. I would say we have the headset, Bluetooth, etc. customizations for the icons. The Volti, Vio, Wi-Fi, both icons you can customize. Of course, Volti calling and stuff should be working fine if you insert a SIM card in it. And we have the Vibrate on toggle touch and the data usage then the quick setting, quick pull down options are there. And we have the brightness slider position. You have it show always and you can choose it on the bottom or top. In the auto brightness icon you can disable it from right here and in the buttons we have the volume wake and stuff then we have the navigation bar in the gesture settings we have the swipe to invoke assistant then we have the haptic feedback and you can actually customize the pill length the pill bar as you can see is quite long on this particular UI but you cannot really customize the thickness of this pill bar on this ROM. We also have the two button and three button navigation, of course, and we have the lock screen customization. In here, we have the lock screen charging info, the edge lighting and the fingerprint authentication vibration and stuff. In the gesture settings, we have again, the system navigation gestures. The three finger screenshot gesture is of course there and you can share, edit and delete the screenshots from right here. And we have the double tap to sleep on the status bar and lock screen. And the long press power button toggle torch is of course there. In the power menu, we have the enable advanced feature option. And in the themes, we have the headline and body fonts. You get to see the fonts over here, no issues with that. And we have the signal icon styles. There are plethora of options for that. And even the icon packs, again, multiple options. Even the Wi-Fi icons, you can customize. Let me show you the icon shapes. These are the shapes you will get. Even the nav bar style, you can customize. But let me tell you, there is no fingerprint scanner FOD customization like the Evolution X ROM. And we have the annoying notification, the vibrate on call connect. 
etc and we have the misc settings from here you can enable this ignore windows secure flags ripple effect etc so that's pretty much all the customizations that this rom has and in here we have the media call ring etc volume controls in the sound settings by the way right now i'm connected to a bluetooth device that's why you can switch the bluetooth or like the device speaker from right here the output device specifically so you can switch just like this and it works perfectly fine no issues whatsoever that i have faced now in here we have the vibration and haptics then if you scroll down more we have the screenshot sound charging sound and vibration the me sound enhancer is of course there and you can go with the youth edition and stuff also we get the other options like the me earphone basic etc and the sound quality for the headphone jack has been really good no issues even the presets you can choose like the bass booster soft bass soft triple etc and we have the smart scene options and the enable hi-fi options are also there then in the clear speaker option we can of course use this and the haptic feedback or the holy why intensity of the haptic feedback you can actually customize from right here in the display settings we have the brightness level auto brightness and the lock screen settings are there and if you scroll down more we have the control from lock device double line clock and the always show time and info wake screen for notification these kind of things and we have the screen timeout then we have the display size and text this is the newer android 13 kind of customization the bold text and stuff is there and the allow window level blurs the double tap to wake screen of FOD you can actually toggle it off or on from here and the ambient display customization is there so pickup and stuff should be working fine i'll show you the few bits kind of speed later on too here we have the custom display settings from here you can enable the dc dimming and the high brightness mode both but you can of course do that from the quick setting panel too in the wallpapers and styles this is how it looks you can of course choose between 16 colors for the monet theme engine kind of colors and even the basic colors are there they are two 16 colors in terms of app grid we have up to 6 by 10 option i don't know who would choose that but I have been using it with a 5x5 option. Let me go back. We have the themed icons, the dark theme, etc. In the security settings. And in here, we have the power button instantly locks. By the way, quick unlock is enabled by default here. You should not worry about it. But let me tell you, there is only this fingerprint option. There is no face unlock option enabled in this ROM. Also, there is no app lock option present in this ROM. So you have to remember that there is no app lock, no face unlock on this particular ROM. So let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed again from here. If I just go here and tap the fingerprint scanner from the lock screen, it should unlock and yes it does let me try one more time and yep let me actually enable the always on display but there is no always on display toggle surprisingly so i have to go to display settings then the lock screen and the always on always show time and info you have to enable and this is how it looks like with the always on display let me tap the fingerprint scanner once again and it unlocks so yeah the fingerprint scanner like unlocking experience is really fast no issues whatsoever just notice how fast it is just tapping the fingerprint scanner and it unlocks so yeah, it is one of the fastest experience on the Redmi K20 Pro, I have to say. But let me tell you or remind you again, this ROM is running at 60 Hz. There is no 72 Hz or just forget about the 90 Hz options. Those are simply present in the Evolution X ROM. In the superior ways, you will only get stuck with the 60 Hz experience. Yes, it is not bad or it is not like really noticeable or something. But for someone who has been using a 120Hz device, you will definitely notice the difference once you switch to this 60Hz experience. Of course, the UI is very smooth, no issues whatsoever that I have faced. Even scrolling and stuff everywhere in Twitter, then even in Play Store and stuff, the scrolling has been working perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever with the like general UI. And if you're wondering about the DRM info, yes, you can get L1 certification over here right out of the box. So the Netflix and Amazon Prime videos, you can stream at 1080p, no issues. Also the safety net passes right out of the box, so you can use banking apps without any worries. And in terms of performance, this ROM has been great again. And as you can see, it scrolls through the UI even on the recent panel really smoothly. No issues whatsoever that you will face. And here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build. So let me in the comments what you guys think about this latest Superior OS unofficial build. I feel this is one of the greatest experiences that you will get in Android 13 if you don't want to flash ROMs like Evolution X for some reason. But definitely I don't see a huge aspect why I should choose this ROM over Evolution X personally. But let me in the comments what you guys feel about this particular ROM. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, share this video with your friends if you want to know about the latest Superior OS unofficial Android 13 build for the Redmi K20 Pro and how it's working. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is Tito from KD and Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.